the student courtyard at Flame University, I'm Ramesh Damani, welcoming you to another episode of the Wizards of Dalal Street, a fresh breeze. Men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. My guest took this victim to heart. His numbers obsessed portfolio strategy has helped him deliver one of the most stellar returns in the PMS market. Joining me today is the chairman of Punat Advisors, Rahul Rathi. Rahul, welcome to our show. Hi Ramesh ji, it's a pleasure to be sharing the dais with a legend of Dalal Street. Thank, Thank you, you so much Rahul. Rahul, numbers don't lie. That's a core belief with you, is it not? Yes, numbers are a measurement of an outcome. If you look at companies like Asian Paints, HDFC Bank, Bajaj Auto, Infosys, Sensex companies, all of them. They've all returned more than 250. Bajaj Finance, they've all returned more than 250 times since inception. That's a number. And why have they returned these kind of stellar returns is what other numbers show. There are two kinds of uh, businesses that you look at. You divide them in two ways. Tell me about it. Right. There are two styles that are there prevalent in investing. One is investing in a business and another is investing in the businessman. What do you look at when you're investing in a business? Uh, you look at an 11-year history because an 11-year history is a GDP cycle where GDP has gone up, GDP has gone down and GDP has drifted. Within the 11-year cycle, how is the business done during bad times, during good times and drifting times? What do you look for beneath that number? You get an 11-year snapshot. Now what are you looking at? The key metrics that we follow to know whether the business has created wealth is how has its operating cash flow grown. Operating cash flow is a number that tells you what is the cash that the operations generate from the business. But that doesn't capture the capex that a lot of business requires or the lot of uh, dividend payouts they have to make. So why is operating cash flow that meaningful? We studied about 160 companies over 30 years, companies that have created wealth. And what we found in a 10-year cycle was operating cash flows in a 3-year period multiplied manifold, where operating cash flows doubled or tripled. Three to four, we call this the golden period. 3 or 4 years, they have average above average operating cash flow growth and 3 years, they have average below of average cash flow growth. Companies that enjoy a golden period have two variables that are common to them. The first is 10% volume growth, which meant that there's a demand for the company's products. And the second is being debt free, which meant that they have pricing power. Volume growth implies pricing? pricing no, uh, there are some companies that also have volume growth without pricing power. But companies that have pricing power, uh, I'll give you an example where if you look at Maruti and if you look at um, uh, their uh, Baleno and you look at Swift, Swift current weight is 1050 kgs and sells at 4.2 lakh rupees and Baleno is 950 kgs and sells at 7.2 lakh rupees. So they have pricing power in terms of weight. All right, but how does that uh, no debt criteria work for you? Um, the no debt criteria means that they are they have operating cash flows. Huh? For volume growth, you need capex and you need working capital. If operating cash flows can take care of working capital and capex, then you have a debt free scenario. Infosys, Maruti all have debt free scenarios because capex is done by auto ancillaries for maruti and they are negative working capital right. because of working capital creditors okay. but uh, <clears throat> that's a strictly quantitative strategy that almost anyone with a laptop and a database can replicate How, wh what is the value add that you provide correct so we have three legs before when we evaluate a company one is the numbers which we have done which we have done the second part is identifying what the management team and the organization is for the company we found in our studies that there are two sources of leadership in any company there is one who is a visionary 
who thinks about what the world will be in the next 10 years. Big picture guy. Big picture guy. And there is a data driven guy who's also a leader who tells the big picture guy whether his vision has risks, the data supports his vision or there is a lot of risk to his vision and he should change his vision. A bean counter. A bean counter. Ted Turner, Jack Welch were notably famous big picture guys. Right. In India, give me some big picture guys that have impressed you. So, um, Deepak Parekh, Sanjeev Pajaj, then um, in terms of, um, uh, you know, Somani, Vikram Somani from Sarah Sanitary Wear are some of the guys whom I believe are leaders in the next millennium and continue to know how India will pan out. Among the newer sets, do you find anyone who's, uh, who strikes you as a big picture guy? So, uh, so Sanjeev Bajaj is new. He's only 48 years old, S started the financial services company and has continued to do well. And uh, he has a number two guy in Rajiv Jain who's delivering on the number strategy. Absolutely. Another guy who's a recent entrepreneur and whom I believe is going to be the entrepreneur of next generation is Samit Ghosh of Ujjivan Financials. Anyone else that strikes you in all these years? The person whom I follow tremendously and uh, who has given me a lot of energy is also Swamiji Ramdev Baba who has delivered phenomenal growth in Patanjali. That's interesting. So now we come around to uh, looking at the quality stuff. Then you look at a valuation matrix. What is that? What we look at, what we found in our history of 30 years, we found that if we can buy a company whose 7 to 10, 9 years of operating cash flow, cumulative operating cash flow, is equal to the market cap of the company, then these investments always create wealth. For me, the golden mean is seven years, but I'm comfortable between seven to nine years because cost of capital has come down significantly with Japanese interest rates being near zero. Is there any sectors that are more prone to higher returns on capital, better cash flows? So only look at those businesses as opposed to other businesses? The way I divide my universe is I have government-led GDP growth and consumer-led GDP growth. I believe that the consumer-led GDP growth is secular in nature and GDP growth is not volatile. So we will invest in companies that have a consumer orientation to it. Rahul, how does a retail investor benefit from this enormous database that you have? We are a SEBI registered investment advisor and the Purnartha model works is where the client tells us that this is the amount he wants to invest and he keeps it with himself. We tell him what to buy for that amount and give you a contract note in return. And he gives us a contract note once he's invested from his own account, keeps the money in his own DP the stocks account. in his own account. Absolutely. He gives us a contract note and we have a technology that we built over two years that captures the NAV for that person and end of the contract period we calculate what has been the return and then we share the profits in a way. So all the control of all the money is with the client. And you put your own money where your mouth is? Absolutely, 95% of my wealth, total wealth for me and my children is invested in this strategy. Raul, you have a great uh, you know, career, you've analyzed stocks, you looked at it differently than most people. Give me some learnings that you can share with us. Right. Um, so the biggest learnings have come from the mistakes that I have made. And uh, one of the mistakes I want to share is Jammu and Kashmir Bank, uh, where data and the outcome did not match. JNK Bank has a clear monopoly to be able to recover money whenever they wanted. But as soon as they started lending in Bombay and Bangalore, the recovery mechanism in Jammu and Kashmir did not work and their NPAs were much higher than expected. So we learned that late and that's why we... So what, so what was the learning there? That data itself is not enough? That is true. What we want to see is their current execution and their history. Are they in sync or they are different? If they are different, we need to re-evaluate whether the capability what we are investing in is what the history matches. You know, in America, they were saying that, in fact, in every dollar bill, they say, in God we trust. 
I can understand from your interview that it's in data you trust. No, it is in God we trust. Also. Everybody else must bring data. Okay, great. <laughs> Rob, thank you for a very good interview.